Ngaleki. In the previous video, we outlined the combinational circuit design procedure, then worked through a simple example. In this video, we will apply the same procedure to a slightly more complicated example. Here, the given task is design a circuit that can negate a binary number. But we need more specifics than that. Pause the video and identify any important questions to ask. The typical question of how many bits needs to be answered again. In this design, we will use four bits. Also, whenever you discuss sign binary numbers, the form must be made clear. In this design, we will use two's complement form. Those are the big questions right now. We will soon discover that there is a unique case to handle, but we'll make a decision on what to do when we encounter it. This is an example of the design process being iterative. Oftentimes, we don't have the full problem neatly laid out in front of us. In these cases, we may need to circle back to defining specifications or variables later on. Step two is to define variables. There will be four bits for both inputs and outputs. Arbitrarily, let's use WXYZ as the input bits and ABCD as the output bits. No matter what value WXYZ represents, ABCD must be the negative of that value in two's complement form. Including this numeric example really helps cement the definition, including the ordering of the bits. Here, the input value would be decimal negative six. Don't forget about the leading negative weight in two's comp form. And so the output value would be decimal positive six. In step three, we draw the truth table to cover all possible input cases. These columns labeled decimal are not technically necessary, but do you see how useful they are? They are what help my human eyes understand what the rows mean. For example, if we plug in a negative one, we should get out a positive one. If we plug in a positive five, we should get out a negative five. In fact, this table was not found from some external resource. It was written from scratch purely from understanding A, how two's complement form works, and B, the purpose of this design. In writing this table, we discover the unique case mentioned earlier. An input of negative eight should result in an output of positive eight, but there's a problem. In four bit two's comp form, the range of possible values goes from negative eight to positive seven. We simply cannot represent positive eight. So what do we do? We ignore that case by listing its outputs as don't care conditions. In doing so, we should make clear in documenting the circuit that it works for inputs of decimal negative seven to positive seven, but not outside that range. That documentation is critical. If you're using a simulator, make a note on the circuit itself indicating the acceptable range. Without that documentation, someone else, or even yourself, might use the device incorrectly. After the truth table comes the step of deriving the Boolean equations, one for each output variable. Using a four input K map, here are the results for A. Note the don't care X that appears on the square for input 1000. On this map, we obtain three groups of four. For your own personal practice, go ahead and pause the video, then draw the maps and find the simplest equations for B, C, and D. They get a little tricky. For B, we obtain one group of two and two groups of four. Don't forget about wraparound adjacency. This results in the equation shown here. For C, we obtain two groups of four, but don't stop there. Notice the pattern for exclusive or in this SOP equation and use the simpler equation. Lastly, D is the simplest output. With a single group of eight, we get the equation D equals Z. Now that the equations are complete, let's implement those in the simulator. Here we see the gate level circuit. 
Note the finer details. The text up top explains the function of this circuit, including the range of acceptable values. The text near the outputs shows the Boolean equations just described. And the wires are color-coded to help us trace the paths of the input variables. But does it work? Let's try out a couple test cases from the truth table. First, let's input positive 5, or 0, 1, 0, 1. The result is 1, 0, 1, 1. Converting that to decimal yields negative 5. So that case works. Next, let's input negative 3, or 1, 1, 0, 1. The result is 0, 0, 1, 1. Again, this matches with the truth table and also what we would get if we converted the numbers by hand. An easier way to see the test results is to convert the circuit into a device symbol. I've done that here. All of the gates and wires on the previous screen are contained in this little box. Also, since we have 4-bit numbers, I'm using a hex display and keyboard to more easily change the numbers. So let's again test an input of positive 5. Hmm. We expect an output of negative 5, but instead see a strange B. What's the issue? The challenge with a hex display is that it has no negative sign, and so assumes unsigned binary numbers. But here, we are interpreting the binary in 2's complement form. To really see what is happening, I will click on Simulation, Show Values, so we can see each of the individual binary values. The input positive 5 is now seen in binary as 0101, and the output is 1011. Is this correct? Yes, according to the truth table, and also yes if we convert the numbers by hand. Similarly, any other test case we try produces the correct output binary sequence. In most cases, when using 4-bit numbers, I do recommend using the hex keyboards and displays. Just be cautious about whether you are reading the numbers in signed or unsigned forms. This concludes our example of designing a 4-bit negator using the formal procedure. Are there other methods of designing combinational circuits? Absolutely. We'll explore them in future lessons.